There are a whole bunch of things I love about the trick. I'm going to share with you right now and then reveal the secrets in a couple of moments. There's a tactile element, a tactile. It happens in people's hands and they feel the magic in a way they seldom do in most tricks. So I really like that about this card trick. There's also a great image and it involves a bit of fire. So all those things make it a, a very powerful and commercial card trick. Okay, you start, you say, hey, you give the cards a bit of a cut. So I'm going to go through the cards, and at some point, rather than you having to pick a card, I'm just going to go through like this. You say stop or snap your fingers or quack like a duck, whatever you want. And they quack like a duck at some point. You cut the cards, okay? You say, you stop me at a card. Now, the back of the card is like all the other cards. So not a lot of information there. It's the face of the card that's the interesting part. In this case, the jack of spades. You say to someone, hold your hand. They hold your hand, or they hold up their hand, and you say, hold on to this like this between your hands. Now, since I don't have somebody right here, uh, let's use my wallet here, okay? So we'll assume my wallet, uh, they're holding on to the card uh, in the, underneath or between their closed hands. They stop at a card. We'll keep that right there in full view, okay? Say, second step. Let's do this. I'm going to do it again. This time, just say stop anytime you want. They say stop at a card. You turn the card over. In this case, it's the six of diamonds. You say, what doesn't matter so much is the two cards. What matters is what I'm going to do to one of the cards. I'm going to do to one of the cards and see if I can make the impossible, strange story of it traveling from one card to the other. You say, look, on the back of the Six of Diamonds, I'm going to take the lighter, I'm going to wave it under here, and smoke, get some smoke going, and you can show it to them. They see it, okay? You say, hold your hand for uh, some, somebody hold out their hand, and you say, hold on to the card, and they hold on to the card. Say, is it hot? They can feel it. The card is hot. They can feel the still warm on the back there, and you say, okay, fine. Do you feel it cooling? And eventually, after some point, they say, yeah, I feel it cooling. Do you feel it getting cooler and cooler and cooler, just a little bit? You say, look. And in possibly the smoke as the heat left they could feel it getting cooler as the heat left from here the smoke left as well then you draw attention back to the spectator holding the other card again still between their hands and that's when you get this whole thing of no no way no way and when the spectator opens their hand they find that on the back of the card they freely selected is in fact the smoke the smoke having traveled impossibly from one card to the other, and it happened in the spectator's own hands. Now this is a very powerful card trick. I love a card trick that isn't like your usual card tricks, because usually with card tricks, you have a card selected, then you find it, whatever, you find the four aces. It's about finding, it's about revealing. In this case, there's no finding, there's no revealing. The cards are just used as blank, really uh, blank pages upon which you write an amazing story of this traveling smoke, okay? So I'm going to reveal to you the secrets and come up with some of the cool moves. This is not a hard card trick, but it's so powerful. Really, people remember this card trick for a long, long time. The There's something inherently magical about smoke, too. So I'm going to reveal the secrets in just a second. At the same time, a question of the week coming at you right now, okay? I'm going to, I'm going to also reveal last week's Cutting Edge winners, the winners of my Cutting Edge card trick where you visibly slice with a razor blade, a sign card, they see the signature cut in half, and then a moment later you restore it. Uh, you can check out the preview of Cutting Edge at sankeymagic.com, my merchandise site there. But here is the question of the week, because this week I want to give away one of my crash course in coin magic, okay? Here's the question right now. Since this involves things moving and essentially appearing in someone's hands, if you could make anything appear, anything appear in someone's hand, what would it be? What would you do? Okay, let's assume you have supernatural powers. It can be a funny thing. It can be an impossible thing. It can be a weird thing. Okay, you can make anything appear in someone's hands. What would it be? Leave a comment down below. You're automatically entered into the free weekly contest. This week, I'm giving away the Crash Course to Coin Magic. So leave a comment down below and tell me what you do. All right. Now, let's take a look at this before I announce the winners of last week's Cutting Edge winners here. Let's take a look at exactly what's going on with this very cool card trick. First thing, there's some secret preparation. So many of the best tricks are, for me, the most performable tricks are tricks where the setup happens early. Okay. Then I'm way ahead. And the magic is essentially revealing this impossible situation that I secretly set up beforehand. So in this case, I get a playing card. 
Nice to have a card with a lot of ink on it because sometimes when you heat up a card, the smoke or the heat or bubbling happens on the face of the card and then you couldn't use that card because people would spot there's something weird with the card early on, right? So the first thing I want to do is take a lighter, could be a candle, but take a lighter and smoke the back of a card, okay? Then very quickly, I take the card, I grab another deck of cards, okay? Very quickly, I take this card, I slip it in the middle of another deck of cards and wrap it with rubber bands, and this is not a joke. Now, I'm going to tell you that even when I was setting this up today, I didn't leave the card. I performed when I showed you guys the trick at the beginning. You might have seen that my double lift wasn't great, and that's because I didn't leave the card long enough, okay? But you take your smoke card, put it inside a deck of cards like this, and wrap it with rubber bands this way and this way, and you leave it overnight, you will find if you leave it overnight under pressure, then the card will take on, will will totally flatten. There'll be no bubbles, no all of this, no that. And if you really want to go the extra mile, take this and put a uh, put it under um, a couple large books, a dictionary, or go back in time and find a phone book. That's right, a phone book. It, Probably not what you think, some of my younger viewers, but it's it's an interesting piece of history. <laughs> Having said that, what you want in the end, what you'll find is once you're done with that is the card, and we'll use this, and you'll see that this, this I left for about an hour and a half, it's still a little warped. Still a bit warped, okay? So it's not ideal. You want it flat, okay? So that's your secret prep. You have a card like that. And that is literally the only preparation involved for this very cool trick. So you've got the smoked card. You want this second from the top. Okay, because you're going to be doing a move called the KM move, uh, better known as, or not lesser known, I guess, is the Kadiro Marlowe move, a reference to two master card magicians, Kadiro and Marlowe, um, and they created this KM move. Okay, and the KM move is really the only slight, apart from a riffle force, the only slight you're using in this trick, and you're using it twice. Okay, you're using it twice. Now, I'm going to tell you that secret move in just a second. Let me announce the Cutting Edge winners from last week's contest. Cutting Edge, man. You're going to like it. Okay, here we go. And as always, if, I'm, if I just announce your name right now, you can get your prize. All you have to do is email my team at contact at sankeymagic.com. Let them know your name, uh, your shipping address, and if uh, your YouTube name is not the same as your real name, we need that too. We want to ship you this very cool card trick, Cutting Edge. Okay, so here are the 12 winners. Julie Shelton... Shoutedin, Shoutedin, nope, joke. S H O U T E D E N, Julie Shoutedin. Kiona Gask, G A S K, so Kioni Gaske. Uh, Jacob3, J A C B O3, Mike Doug, Ryan Hall, Mark Sakihara, uh, Sakihara, Sakihara, Mark Sakihara, sorry about that. Robert Shaw the Fourth, or Robert Shaw IV, if he's very sick. Will Weatherington, sorry, man. Will Weatherington, Michael Glenn, the magic of Nick Carrick. Hey, man, how you doing? The magic, I love it. It sounds like a, uh, someone's really committed to the magic thing. The magic of Nick Carrick. Congrats, man. William Piskey and Marky Snot. I'm not joking. This last name, S-N-O-double-T, uh, because you don't want people confusing it with the, the snot up the nose, so the double T throws them right off. So you guys have all won a, uh, the Cutting Edge winners. You guys won. Send an email to my team. Congratulations, guys. Congratulations. Okay, let's just jump back into this trick here now. So we've got our smoked card second from the top. It's a face card, so it'll conceal any of the bubbling or smoke like this. It's second from the top. When we want to perform the trick, we cut the pack, or maybe we do a double undercut. Some false cut. These, that's a false cut there. Here's an old-timey false cut like this. That's a false cut, too. This all keeps the two cards that I need on top of the deck. Then I cut the pack and I keep a little break with my pinky. Okay, and I'm going to use a riffle force, but you could use any force you want to, Hindu force or whatever. You go through, they call snot, snot, they call snot, uh, <laughs> like this, uh, and you cut to the pack. And then you're going to do it now. I like to draw attention. It's all about the images that they think of. A magic trick lasts this long. The memory of a magic trick lasts a lot longer, and that's what you're creating. That's the clay you're working on, their memories, okay? So I start by saying, well, there's the back of the card, not a lot of interesting information there. Make sure they, without saying, see, there's no smoke or marked on that, I'm showing them by saying, not a lot of information there, or the back of the cards, like all the other cards in the pack. What's interesting is the face of the card, right? And that's where I do a double lift. Now, the double lift I'm using here, because I'm going to be turning this over a couple of times, okay? So I come over and I do a strike double and you'll find 
even if the card is super flat, it might still slightly have a bend or a little, and that'll be easier for you to get your finger. It'll separate from the, the second card from the top from the third card, okay? So I do a double lift, and as I turn it over, though, I want you to see this. This is important. As I turn over this double like this, I'm catching it. I'm going to turn this here. The fleshy part of my thumb here, the card at the back is like this. I'm catching it. The double card is being separated from the other two with a bit of flesh here. That'll make it a lot easier for me when I do my second, when I turn the card over again. You don't want to have to do two strikes and two uh, when you can when you can make sure that the second one is perfect, right? Or there's no get ready essentially for the second one. So I turn over my double. I show jack of spades there. Now I'm going to do the Kadiro Marla move. Okay, here it is. I come over. I grab both. And I am going to, as I pull this away, okay, as I, as I show the card here, so it's a turn and a turnover to show, uh, sorry, so showing the back, beat, turning over, keeping it here. Now, I've shown the back in front, and then I take the card and put it in their hand. Now, what this does is it shows both sides of the card and gets rid of that cover card. That's what the Kadiro Marlowe move does so beautifully. And here's the exposed view. I'm going to bring it over here. Watch here. The left fingertips are going to squeeze off that. I'm pulling that off as the hand turns over and goes away. Okay? Now, you can try to do it here and without turning the left hand over too much and just sort of a flick. Okay? But th there's more places for it to flash and things like this. So, if you're particularly if you're newer to card magic, and this is not hard, I take the two cards turn this over, and then go away, and I flick with the thumb. Say, would you hold your hand? Just a casual gesture. Stealing off that card, leave me with this. Now, this is very important detail. For years, I performed this trick, and I would put it in people's hands. Do the rest of the trick. When I came back to this, I'd then say, oh, no, turn over the card, and they'd see the smoke, and it was a nice, strong ending. Then one day, it occurred to me, I could put it in their hands, put their hand on top. Then I grab their two hands and casually turn them over, okay? So essentially here, using the wallet, you put this face up there. They close their hands. And I say, actually, put your hands just like that, parallel to the floor. And I say, just like that, parallel to the floor. It justifies, because why am I turning it over? Not that they're going to think, hey, I think there's smoke on the back of the card. But why are you doing that? When you say like this, and I go just parallel to the floor, and I'm really, I take a moment, maybe right like that. It opens up a whole possibility of why is he doing that? Is he letting us in on the method? What's it got to do with that? It opens up the imagination of other people. So I love that, okay? So remember, when you put this in someone's hands, it goes face up but then you turn the hands over. The other reason I do it is so that when at the end, when they open their hand, look, there's this sense that it just appeared. There's this sense that when I put it in their hand, it was, the last image was that in their hand. And now the brand new image is this, as if it just happened in the interim. Very important psychology there, okay? So their hand, that's holding it like that. Let's remember that and put that there like that. Okay, so where am I? I just stole off this card that was on the top there like that. Next, what I do, you can reinforce the fairness of something that you did 30 seconds before by, re by seemingly repeating the same action, okay? So now that the deck, now what I can do is I can take the deck and give it a shuffle, whatever, like this. Let's try it again. I can do the exact same, I can mirror the same techniques, but this time everything's legit. I'm not forcing or controlling everything, anything. They call stop. I cut the pack there. Now, again, I do a double lift. I come over, I do a strike double. I turn both cards over. Four of spades, I show that to them. Turn this over and smoke it. Or you could smoke it, then do the other, whatever. But now I'm keeping my double. I've got my flesh at the back. Going to do my this. Now, this is the exciting part. This is another exciting part for me. Okay. I just smoked that card. That card, the heat from the lighter is so strong... It warms up the top card, and the card beneath it is warm to the face of it. So when I repeat the move, the Kadiro Marlowe move, when I turn the card over, showing the four of spades, steal off the smoked card, put this down or in my pocket. When I put this in someone's hands, it still feels warm. It still 
feels warm, which perfectly sells the idea that this still has the smoke stain on it. What's awesome about this trick, and keep this in mind, it's not just the appearing of the smoke that makes it powerful, it's the vanishing of the smoke as well. They're two tricks, essentially. And when you perform this, honor both impossible moments. People can sense when you're in a rush to go on to something else. So really honor it, because they have no idea how crazy things are about to get. You can put this in someone's hand, even after my talking there, it still feels a little bit warm, okay? You can put it in their hand, have them hold onto it like this, or you can just rub it on the back of this person's hands. I've done this before. If you just wanna get, if you're doing it for one-on-one -on -one in a bar, and this is a great way to meet strangers in a bar, it's a great uh, connection trick, is they're holding onto this. After I take this off the deck, I can rub it like this on the back of their hand and ask, do you feel the smoke? Do you feel it? Do you feel it? Do you feel it getting cooler? And now, because you can then, of course, press firmly initially and then looser and looser as the moments go by, uh, you can better control that when they're going to say it feels cooler because you're actually removing a little bit off the back of their hand so it's cooler that way too. And then the final end. Boom. The smoke's gone. They're not immediately... Now, nobody at this point thinks the smoke is going to go from the car to the other car. Nobody has any clue. They're not that far ahead. Right now, they're just wondering about the smoke and it's cooling. Hmm, it's cooling. That's kind of interesting if the smoke is... Smoke's gone. They want to see the car. The smoke's gone. Only now do some people go, wait a second. If it's gone from here, dot, dot, dot. Very important that the audience, it's okay sometimes if the audience gets a bit ahead of you, just a little bit ahead, okay? And then boom, you will, it's sort of like they have a suspicion. Often they have no clue, but it's a satisfying experience for an audience for them to jump ahead theatrically and then you reveal quickly that they're right. You don't want it to get stale in there and they think, I think it is, do you think it is? Maybe it is, oh, it is. Okay, so you, it's a timing thing. It's a pacing thing. Smoke's gone here. They lift their hand. They open their hand, whatever, and the smoke has appeared there. And a tip. Here's a hot tip for any of you real-world workers who want to do this trick in sort of a walk-around situation is you do have a smoked card here like this. But if you only lightly smoke it, okay, rather than really smoke it so much that you got to put it in the deck overnight, if you lightly smoke it, you're actually reset. You now have a smoked card in your pack. And you can easily get that with one card on top, set up for your next table if you're doing walk around or a cocktail party or something like that. So that's kind of a cool detail too. Do not forget, please leave a comment down below. Okay, I want you to have a chance to win the Crash Course in Coin Magic. I'm going to announce the winners next week as always. The question of the week is if you could make anything appear in someone's hands, what would it be? Something weird, something funny, something impossible, something crazy, if you could do that, all right? And the last thing, apart from, I'm going to ask you to do two things. One is please subscribe to the channel. If you haven't subscribed, this is the first video of mine you're ever seeing. I hope you find it kind of entertaining and interesting. And, you know, magic is just so flexible. You don't have to be the, the cheesy magician going ta-da up on stage or birthday parties. You can share it with friends at school or uh, f with work friends uh, in the, the work lunchroom or in bars, clubs, at the gym, wherever. It's a really great way to connect with people, to stand out, to ex and a great way to really work on your social skills as well. So please subscribe to the channel. Lots of fun videos coming very soon. Also, follow me on Instagram. You can follow me on Instagram. My whole other perspective on my magic life, my live performances, and all that kind of stuff. Creativity tips. Uh, Instagram at the real Jay Saney. Thank you so much, guys.